Hey everyone, Cuberto Agency is in the house again. Flip a Clip is one of our favorite clients and products that we also use. Their app has already passed 60 million downloads and despite being so popular, Flip a Clip has never had a website of its own. And we were entrusted to create a site that would complement this unique tool and demonstrate its main features at the highest level. In this masterclass, we will look at how we created the Flip a Clip website, what creative concept lies in the basis, and a few words about the front-end development process. Before the design stage, we had a completed client brief, basic text, and a set of some animations from the application that could be used on the site. We held several kickoff meetings with the client and discussed the vision of the future site. It was decided to make a site in the storytelling style, gradually immersing users in the description of the product and its features. Having previously agreed on the script, I began to draw the prototype of the site in the form of frames, since all the interaction, as planned, should have been tied to the scroll action. Since we are creating a site for the best tool for stop-motion animation, the concept of the site had to correspond to this. I initially saw this site in black and white, and I decided to make animated wavy transitions from one background to another. Moving according to the given scenario, I draw block by block. Flip a Clip is essentially a business card site. Definitely not a site that generates new users for the Flip a Clip app. This is an image story that demonstrates the capabilities of the application. Surely this content presentation is not innovative and the main reference we used was Apple websites. It is extremely important to think over the scenario and understand how and what should interact with each other. These transitions help with switching the user's attention from the previous section and focus on the new one. And since I'm showing the flip a clip tools in the next section, changing the background will help shift the focus. I finished demonstrating the features of Flip a Clip, and now I need to show a few more sections. The promoted Flip a Clip community, social media stats, and the footer. The prototype is ready, and let's see what happens. To make the presentation more complete for the customer, I add motion design. When working with animations, I use After Effects. Yes, it takes more time, but some sites are better presented in animations than explained in words. The 
client's feedback was positive and our idea coincided with the client's vision. We have slightly revised the script and the priority of content delivery. Plus, after the presentation, the client saw what information materials are required from them and what texts need the final presentation. Having collected the necessary materials, I continued to work on UI design. There is not much text throughout the site, so we can use large typography with center alignment. In the Layer It Up section, I use a 3D model of a smartphone in projection and upload a short video for developers. The next sections on the prototype looked very schematic. It is at the UI stage when I am bringing the script to the final state. These transitions help with switching the user's attention from the previous section and focus on the new one. And since I'm showing the flip -a clip tools in the next section, changing the background will help shift the focus. I am creating motion in After Effects. I can show you some of the highlights. After creating a project, I transfer the design layout from Figma to After Effects using the AEUX plugin. The iPad mockup uses video content from the client. I import the video and fit it to the mockup. For all the titles, I want to make vibrating animation like in stop motion cartoons. To do this, I apply the turbulent displace effect to the titles and arrange animation keyframes. To show exactly how this will work, I need to create many copies of this animation fragment, and the Motion Tools plugin helps me with this. Now I'm transitioning from the header to an iPad mockup that flies across the screen on top of the header.
In the next section, I will show frame-by-frame -frame animation fragments with the title Simple, Intuitive, Fun, with words shifting separately in the text block. All animations need to be smooth, and for this setup, I use the Flow plugin. The plugin already has some interesting curve animations. You just need to select certain keyframes and apply curve to them. I turn to rendering a frame-by-frame -frame animation of a circle that jumps and flies into the iPhone mockup. All animation will be linked to the scroll. The circle itself passes a certain path along a given trajectory, leaving behind a trail of the same circles. The appearance of the circle occurs already on the prepared vector layer, and here I use trim paths. I storyboarded the circle in advance, and the whole animation consists of a simple appearance and disappearance of it. I created the bouncing circle effect by moving its vector points. To make the animation look like frame by frame, I set the value of 12 frames in the composition settings. We need to loop the whole composition with the circle animation, and I apply Enable Time Remapping to the layer.
checking. The next step is when the bouncing circle flies into the smartphone mockup. I transfer the smartphone mockup to After Effects and set up the animation. Checking again. In some places of the site page, I used a background change from white to black and back. The effect is reminiscent of spilled ink. To reproduce this in After Effects, I created vector circles, to which I add offset paths. This allows me to animate their size at the same time within the same layer. To make the circles look like spreading blobs, I apply a turbulent displace effect to the layer. Testing this bit now. Now I add this effect to those places on the page where a similar transition from section to section will be used, and then I adjust the timings.
When the background is filled with black, all the text and elements in the header should be repainted in white. I also show this so that the developers don't forget to make an inversion. In the Layer It Up section, there will be a phone animation that I put together in 3D. I export the animation to a TIF sequence and transfer it to After Effects. The smartphone screen consists of several layers that slide out when scrolling. To make these layers isometric, I apply the corner pin effect to them. In the new features section, I show the change of colored backgrounds and iPad screens.
In the Let's Animate section, the buttons will also have a vibration effect. I'm just copying those here. I use time remapping to loop the animation. Almost done. I arrange the circles and stars and set up the animation so that they appear and disappear at different times so it will look much more interesting. checking the final result of the entire animation. While the developers are trying to think of the best way for coding it, I make the main page responsive and create the secondary pages. For the responsiveness, we include the following resolutions. 1600 pixels, 1200 pixels, 1024 pixels, 768 pixels, 
and 375 pixels. As for the development itself, the tech implementation of Flip-A-Clip was very similar to our previous Fahrenheit project. Here we also actively used the technique of linking the sequence of images to the scroll. However, unlike the previous project, there was a requirement that all complex animations should work on mobile devices. The most obvious problem was the overall size optimization. We needed to compress all sequence images and other assets as efficiently as possible to ensure that the site loads quickly on the mobile web. Thanks to the general style of the site, one part of the sequence was easily turned into an SVG, which gave both excellent quality and weight. Another part of the sequence, for example, in Let's Animate section, we manually checking each frame, compressed with utils like PNG Quant and PNG YU. Another very, very complex issue was how mobile browsers handled the CSS VH units rules when a dress bar is showing or hiding, causing the viewport to resize. This behavior completely broke all scroll-based animations and caused heavy recalculations each time the address bar was shown or hidden. In addition, we encountered a lot of issues such as multi-threaded synchronization issues, inconsistent momentum scroll across devices, and IO Safari bugs which misreport position data, causing jittering glitches. Most of the bugs were related to the IO Safari browser. At that time, GSAP scroll trigger did not have built-in scroll normalization functions, and we had to apply a lot of fix acts to fix it. All links are in the description. Thanks for watching and see you soon.